What is up everyone? Welcome to the Hi-Fi Turtle where we talk about everything audiophile. Today I'm talking about the Meze Lyric. This is the least expensive planar magnetic isodynamic driver from Meze Audio. It's also a closed back headphone. Meze sent this pair for my review and I've really been enjoying my time with these. Like I said, this is a closed back headphone and Meze markets this headphone as a portable pair of audiophile headphones, meaning that they really mean you to take it in noisy places like on a commute or maybe in a busy office or something like that. And while this is not a noise canceling pair of headphones, it is noise isolating. I have to say, I haven't worn a pair of closed back headphones in a very, very long time. And putting these on and starting to type on my keyboard at my computer or just hearing my furnace go off in the house, I honestly didn't, it was weird not hearing those noises because I'm just so used to hearing them while I have my open back headphones on, like my Odyssey LCD2 or my Focal Clear. I don't think these headphones have a noise reduction rating like you would find on a pair of like safety headphones or earplugs you'd wear to a concert, but it was very isolating from the sound. I would have to estimate, just given my experience, at least 10 dBs of noise reduction when these are on your head. While I didn't wear them on a bus or take them on a train or anything like that, I did take these to my office and wear them and it totally isolated me from the office noise. Where I would typically hear conversations in the hallway or outside of my office, those really all went away with these headphones. They're lightweight, they're ultra comfortable, although this headband is a very different style than what we've seen with the Elite, the Imperion, and even the 109 Pro. And I can only imagine that Meze didn't go for that same design only by the fact that if you had this rail over your head like that and you're out in public or in the office, people would probably look at you like you're some sort of crazy person. They'd be like, what the heck is going on with those headphones? You see in the headband this cutout that happens in the foam and that's to allow more airflow on your head so your head doesn't get all hot. These are leather ear cups with kind of a suede material on the inside. I don't want to call this velour because it doesn't feel like velour to me. It's more suede and then the outside is more of a smooth leather. We see leather both on the ear pads and on the outside of the ear cup and supposedly on the top of the ear band. Although this feels to me like polyurethane or fake leather. I don't think this is real leather on the top. The leather on the ear cups and the ear pads is very supple, very nice feeling. I think this is some sort of calfskin leather, but the quality you can tell is vastly different from the headband. And I think this is just, again, a pleather, a polyurethane. And the construction of the ear cups and the other parts of the headphone are made of metal, a mix of both magnesium and aluminum, so very durable. And the metal parts of the ear cup and the connector here have this wet look to the metal that gives it a little bit of character. Really nice build, look, and feel. My only quip with this is that the stitching that they used for the headband, it is like this plastic stitching, and there was a little nub that was coming out that kind of poked me on my neck occasionally if I was wearing the headphones over the neck like this. Certainly I could just take like a nail clipper and just clip that part off, but given this is a review pair, I don't want to mess with it in any sort of way. There's a nice storage box that comes with these headphones, and then the carrying case is another hard shell carrying case like we saw with the 109 Pro that has the nice velour on the inside that's fun to touch. You get both a short and a long cable that plugs in to a 3.5 millimeter jack and then an adapter to go to quarter inch. And if you order these headphones on Meze's website, they'll also include a free premium cable. So you can choose your termination, whether that's balanced or unbalanced. And that is when you order it from the Meze website. I'll put a link in the description and also in the comments for the link to these headphones in case you wanna get them. I don't know how long the promotion is gonna last and they say that it is a $499 value for the premium headphone cable. So check it out if you are interested in these headphones. The driver for this unit is a isoplanar, planar magnetic, isodynamic driver, whichever way you wanna call it. It is a thin film with magnets surrounding it that causes the sound to be created. In the case of Meze, and this is the same with the Imperion and the Elite, it is a isodynamic driver made in collaboration with Renaro. Renaro has the patent on this particular kind of driver, and it is a very unique design in the world of planar magnetic drivers. While typically you only have one film that emanates the whole range of frequencies, in the Meze headphones you have two different windings, if you will, of that film 
to create the sound. There's a winding for the bass frequencies and then a winding for the mid and treble frequencies, each of which is specialized for that frequency band. Meze says this increases clarity, resolution, and also moves the point of eminence of sound down ever so slightly so it lines up better with the ear canal. And in the lyric, we see Meze employ a technology they call Phase X, which is supposed to make the lyric sound more like an open back headphone versus the closed back headphone kind of in your head feeling. I think Meze did a pretty good job at implementing this comparatively to the 109 Pro, which is an open back. I definitely think that the lyric matches it and its ability to sound very open and airy. Although certainly not as open and airy as my actual open back LCD2 or Focal Clear. For amplifier pairings, I again used my Gold Note DS10 as the DAC and then the Moon 230 HAD as the amp, and in some cases used the 230 HAD as both the amp DAC all in one. Now again, Meze says that this is a portable headphone, and certainly those two components are not portable. You're gonna put that at a desk or your listening area and they're not gonna move from there. You're not gonna take a Sim Audio 230 HAD on your commute. So to test Meze's claim that this is a portable pair of headphones, I plugged it into the $9 Apple USB-C dongle. And I didn't think this was gonna work. I really was like, okay, yeah, it will probably work, but you're gonna have to pay like $100 or maybe $200 to get an audiophile quality dongle or one that just has a lot more power than the literal $9 Apple USB-C dongle. But to my surprise, that actually drove these headphones to reasonably loud levels. No, it's not crazy loud or concert-like, but good enough levels to where I felt comfortable listening to those levels. If I went really any louder, I think it would be a little bit much, especially for extended listening periods. And it just surprised me that a planar magnetic headphone could be drive by the Apple dongle. Certainly not as hi-fi or resolute as a $5,000 stack of components, but respectable. So like I said at the beginning of this video, the Lyric falls more in line with what I have experienced in the past with the Meze Imperion and the Meze Elite, and is almost the complete opposite of the 109 Pro, where the 109 Pro was tonality neutral to bright, the Lyric is definitely a dark headphone. And that's not to say that the Lyric is lacking in treble detail or mid-range clarity, it certainly has that, but the 109 Pro is certainly certainly more shimmery, more sparkly on the top end to say the least. Standout quality is certainly the bass. This is probably not a surprise to anyone who's familiar with planar magnetic headphones. They're famous for having flat frequency responses up to like one kilohertz and sub bass extension that will reach down into the single hertz. That is certainly my experience with the Lyric and probably the most so of any planar magnetic headphone that I have experienced especially comparing it to another planar magnetic headphone, like my now over 10 year old pair of Odyssey LCD2s, non-phaser version by the way. While the sub-bass extension of the Odysseys is certainly there, it is nowhere near as powerful as the sub-bass that is coming out of the Lyric. That being said, in some extremely bass heavy music, there were times where I felt like the Lyric started to get a little boomy or a little bloated at times versus the cleaner, output of the Odyssey LCD2. The Lyric is a very, very fun headphone. And in my experience, it makes poorly recorded tracks sound really, really good. Probably my favorite listening experience on the Lyric was the Mastodon discography. Mastodon is a band that I've been a fan of for a long time. And with their latest album coming out, the absolute banger on that album is Pushing the Tides. It sounds unbelievable on the lyrics. On my primary speaker system, on any other headphone that I have tried thus far, it's just okay, or you see a lot of the flaws, unfortunately, in that recording. With the lyric, I feel like all those flaws got glossed over, and all you got was a extremely fun, extremely musical experience out of that. Another track that I really enjoyed was Ultra Violence by Poor Stacy, who is an artist that I can't say I actually really like, because his music is weird, but there's at least two or three tracks that I like out there, and Ultraviolence is certainly one of them. It's kind of a lo-fi horror metal banger, 
And yeah, it sounds really good on the Lyric. And then listening to something like the 10th anniversary remaster of Deaf Heaven's Sunbather, which is a screeching, etching, brutal album, is very much so enjoyable on the Lyric. Again, more so than any other headphone that I have experienced thus far. So you may be thinking, well, okay, uh, I listen to good music, not poorly recorded stuff. So are you telling me that I shouldn't buy this headphone if I listen to good recordings? No, because good recordings are still gonna come out great on this headphone and they might be the funnest version of that recording that you've ever heard. I honestly played some Diana Krall on the Lyric and it was the most fun I've ever had listening to Diana Krall. It's just a very different headphone. It's not that super analytical, ultra hi-fi headphone, but it still has tons of detail and clarity to where hi-fi enthusiasts don't feel like they're missing out. But at the same time, you can play whatever you want and still have a great time. And it's such a fun headphone, it makes you wanna share that with other people. And being that it's so portable and that the fact that I brought this to my office, I did that. I brought it to my office and shared it with some people. And one of my interns, what she said about it was that she felt like she was at a concert. And the other thing she said was, these are like the Apple AirPod Maxes, but actually worth the money. But I really enjoyed my time with the lyrics. They are a really good headphone and just what I've come to expect from Meze. I don't think they've put out a bad product yet. And I'm looking forward to eventually trying the newly released Empyrean 2. Again, another big thanks to Meze for sending this pair for the review. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Check the links below in the description for other ways to help support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.